pivot, Anthony Davis. People were like, this man is washed, this man. I mean, he just said, fuck it, I'm not a three-point shooter anymore. You know, some games I'll shoot four or five threes, but most games I'll shoot one or two. And I'm just going to feast inside. 38 against the Timberwolves, then 39. Guess guess what? You want to hear something crazy? They beat the Warriors last night. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? They're now two and a half games behind the six seed. And they are currently tied with the Jazz for the 10th seed. They're half a game behind the Pelicans for the 9th seed. Okay? They're two games back behind the Clippers for the 8th seed. And technically the 7th seed as well. So if anybody, if they continue to play well, which if you look at the Lakers, they play the Grizzlies tomorrow. Then the Raptors, then the Knicks. And, you know, they could potentially go when they play the Knicks on next Sunday. They could potentially be at that point 33 and 34. What are your thoughts? Just real quick, you got something really annoying going out there, Mike. Anytime you talk, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, what what was he doing? Like, it just makes like a clicking noise, but, anyways. Anthony Davis, this is what we've been saying. He's got to play like MV Davis because we all know he can. I mean, I don't really think this team is is playing well at all, but he, they're still holding on, man. They're still holding on. They're catching a nice break with Memphis because Ja will be out. You've got to win that game. And then you have Toronto. Uh, the Knicks are going to be really hard, but hopefully you can get wins against the Pelicans and Houston. I think they'll definitely... I have a hard time. If LeBron was there, it would be a little bit different. I have a hard time believing they'll get out of the play-in. But they should be able to climb in there. I know the Jazz are falling behind and the Pelicans have been falling behind for a while now. There's just going to be a lot of must-win games. Like last night was just a huge win for them. I, cannot, I actually can't really believe that they won it. This team is so fascinating because they'll lose embarrassing uh, they'll play bad like against minnesota the other night and then they'll come out here and beat golden state but d getting d back is gonna be huge for making a, a final season run no lebron is is really tough but i would pick with no lebron i'd still take him over the pelicans and the jazz for nine and ten so first off, old 21 viewers right now, if you're enjoying it, hit that like and subscribe button. We're live Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern time. And next week, we'll be fucking around with two hour shows. If you want daily NBA content covering every single NBA team Monday through Friday, and we do clips and short form content coming actually this fucking week. But let's get to it. So yeah, no, I agree. This team, first off, Dennis Schroeder is playing phenomenal. What up, Master Ugwe? Hopefully I said that correctly, but got like a Sid the Sloth from Ice Age as your guy. But I think this is a team that definitely, when you look at them, do I sound all right to you now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a team that definitely is, mm, Dennis Schroeder's hungry. First off, Dennis Schroeder conjuring the inner, the Euro basket, you know, player he was. He's playing horrible right now, man. I know, I know, I know, I know. I but he, can, to... he can help you out. He should be able to help you out. D'Lo, that's why they need D'Lo back. Like, all love for Dennis Schroeder. He'll, he'll have some good nights, but, like, the last two games he's been he, – he, he's been throwing up bricks. Austin Reeves has been huge. He's a jack of all trades. Jared Vanderbilt has been huge. I know a lot of Timberwolves fans are like, oh, well, he wasn't getting the Jazz fans. He wasn't getting this much love with us. Well, it's like that's because they're not Los Angeles, and it's just as simple as that. It's like the way the cookie crumbles. But uh, Troy Brown Jr. has been huge as well recently. Guys are stepping up. Guys are certainly stepping up. It's just tough when, when LeBron James is out. But Anthony Davis is doing what Anthony Davis needs to do. He's had some great games, and... I still like that. I mean, they still got a nice starting five. You know, Sugar won't go 4 or 13 every night, but Jerry Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley. Hopefully, Malik Beasley can start knocking out some threes. Hopefully, the lights aren't too bright in LA. I don't imagine they are. But So, 
one thing that I think is interesting that they said it was like two or three weeks we'll see LeBron get reevaluated for the foot injury. He's had, I think, that tendon problem. And one thing I want to take about from there is that they said that LeBron's return date will be determined by the team's success in his absence. So at what point does this team like oh i just with every week with every game it just gets closer and like i want this is this is low-key a great story and it's fun to watch this team push and try to make the playoffs and i think anthony davis is showing that he is a good basketball player still who can make an impact and be a guy who can make a difference for a team so my thoughts are that like hey this is a team that if you wanted to potentially see them go to the next level i think it's the best way to do it is probably continue to give the ball to anthony davis you got to win through anthony davis you got jared vanderbilt troy brown jr austin reeves as like your defensive swiss army knives you got malik beasley lonnie walker Rui Hachimura, dennis schroeder always like your plethora of scores in the wing Gabriel Mobamba is the extra depth behind that center until D'Lo and LeBron are back I mean we need Anthony Davis to be superhuman yeah if D'Lo was back right now I'd feel very comfortable I don't think we'll see LeBron at least for five more games you got to get the win against Memphis if they lose Memphis on Tuesday that wouldn't be good but then they play Toronto and New York in this week with a couple of rest days from Tuesday to Friday so if they can go two and one they should be golden. That would be perfectly fine to me. And then hopefully they can get the other must-win game against the Pelicans, take down the Houston Rockets, and that's about a week and a half from now. So this team could go four and one. As long as they don't go two and three, I think LeBron will continue to rest. The Jazz are struggling, man. They've lost three straight, and it's still right there. You know, it's certainly still right there. The Clippers got a much needed win. It's in their grasp. It's within their grasp. That the thing is, is that they can be a playoff team. And Don't forget about the Thunder, though. You also got to worry about the Thunder and not necessarily Portland, but because they're sneaker teams. LeBron just needs a playoff spot, all right? And I really think that this team is better for their championship hopes to be the sixth seed, which is within grasp. I think this team, at the very least, is a playing team, but it is within grasp to be a playoff team the sixth seed where you get a little bit of rest right before the playoffs start and you get an easier opponent and less games. I just think just give them that seed. That's why there's certain teams saying we need a play and spend. And then there's teams like the Miami Heat who are going, we need that sixth seed, six seed guys, six seed. You yeah, agree? Six seed would be nice. We'll see what happens in the West in the last couple of weeks. You know, as good as Sacramento is and as good as Memphis can be, Phoenix is surging. And I don't anticipate that to stop. So I think Phoenix, I mean, they're currently four. I wouldn't, I'd rather play Memphis than Sacramento. Um, but you, you don't want to play either team. It, it'll be interesting. Yeah, just get into the, get into the playoffs. I don't think they'll be able to get the six seed, but playing's fine. It, it, this probably isn't the year for the Lakers. It's probably next year. And that's hopefully okay i've seen a lot of trade ad stuff going on but <laughs> like the beam if they have d -Lo come back next year that'd be great is d'angelo coming back i be this week i know it's a <laughs> fuck phoenix like the beam He's master Uguay, we'll we'll talk about that later we talked about we like it we've talked about it in previous episodes i, I mean i I, I like it. I guess we're on both different it's sides. One game. <laughs> Not his fault though. It's won one game. Lakers six seed or a play a team as we before we switch it. Playing six seed. And I'm not even wow. like a Lakers fan. Yeah, you're the one who's been sucking the Lakers dick all season. You're not even giving them the, the benefit of the doubt. You're a fake fan. Their best player is injured. All right, but they still have a guy who arguably is a top 10 player in the NBA. We've done this for like six weeks. Oh, LA's three games behind 500. If they just go on a five game win streak, they'll be right there. But this is the goddamn NBA. We, we have to talk about this for six weeks. 
No, I know. I'm just saying. I don't really understand why it would change without LeBron. It's like they'd win five straight. Yeah. Also, I want to say our Twitter numbers do like pretty decent. I wonder if it's because people are looking up the the names too. And then it pops up the like, stream. Oh, like, let me look up Knicks right now. Yeah. Pretty decent. I mean, 